so obviously North London Derby was the best day of my life. There's three Spurs games I look back on this season. It's the home win versus City. It's the comeback versus Leicester where Bergwijn scored in like the 150th minute. And then it's the North London Derby from last week. And for the life of me, I can't tell. I think I think North London would be my favorite, looking back, favorite result. But I I thought that was going to have serious lasting effects. And then the Arsenal's match showed that that, that was very true. So it, it's good to be in the driver's seat. We were very fortunate to be playing two really poor teams to end the season. And Arsenal are playing a, a much improved Newcastle side. And now an Everton side that's clawing out of relegation. You don't like to play those clubs at the end of the season. So... Feeling really, really, really good. And I think the number one thing, too, that because obviously I've watching a lot of Arsenal content and they're like, see, the reason that we are in in this position is because we didn't make moves in January. I'm thinking, man, like I wasn't unhappy by any means with the signings, but I feel like Bentoncourt and Kulisevsky went went a little bit under the radar. It was they were sort of inconspicuous signings and shit. I mean, if Kula didn't play next to Kane and Son, I'd say he'd be our, our most prolific attacker. And then. Bentecourt has changed our midfield really completely, in, in my opinion. So it was good business in January, and now you see where those benefits pay off. Even if it's only getting a few points enough to beat Arsenal and finish in that fourth spot, it's well worth it because the difference between fourth and fifth in Premier League is, is very substantial. So I've been Debbie Downer. Spurs have really put me through the ringer this season. Andrew, you know what that's like. Your team's done the same thing. Yeah, um, don't remind me. <laughs> but it's it's nice to think that they can end on a good little a good little run of games here. It would require a draw at, at the very least. <laughs> Let's hope they Norwich. can do it <laughs> against Norwich, who we One point, <laughs> when we when the at, when we were doing our little promo here, I was we're all looking at the table. Jalen's like, "Wow, how can anybody have only twenty two points like at this point?" And I'm like, "Was there a worse team? Derby County in two thousand eight registered eleven points total for the whole season. <laughs> they didn't win a game. So Norwich, you can have your head held high in that regard." Um, but I don't know. Do you guys see like a Spurs slip up on the final match day? It'd be like, very Spursy of that. Yeah, it would be so Spursy. It'd be almost too on the nose. But I feel like yeah. it'd be like a Pookie hat trick. I don't. <laughs> no, I don't per- even. I personally don't think that will happen. I don't think Conte would like. We'll have the team I, I set up that I think because you have like, Conte, it's it's the reason why it won't happen. I think it, if it was any other, if, stop saying that. Even if <laughs> I think, yeah, even if Spurs got Spursy, at the very least, it's a draw. Well, because then Arsenal would need to win their game. They need to beat Everton, which will not be easy based on what Everton are trying to do right now. And Arsenal's form. And I think they need to beat them by like six or seven yeah, goals you have or a something. Heavy goal. So you have a heavy goal advantage. Truly, the worst day of my life would need to happen in order for Arsenal to, to have, finish above Spurs. They but, would have to score like. 15, 15 goals. goals. <laughs> yeah. Could happen. Oh Could happen. Saka's in good form. I mean, we, are plus 24 and Arsenal are plus nine. I mean, I think my, and I think my final point too is, is I didn't think I'd like Conte as nearly as much as I did. Like obviously the only real metric Spurs fans had to go off is Potch, but how does this guy relate to Potch? Cause Potch is still kind of the OG coach everyone loved. And Mourinho came with a lot of negativity, a lot of blame. That's just how he is. It's not a judgment. It's a fact. Like he is, he's a, he's a coach who will often look out for his, his own self when things get rough and he led us to some good things. But I mean, I, I Conte, I just, I, I don't have enough good things to say about him. I, and he's in the sideline energy. He loves the team. They respond really well to him. He's gotten Kane reinvested, which is a huge thing. So I just think, I think the Premier League doesn't. I think they kind of underestimate how good Conte is really is. And I think once you have a full squad under him next season, if it's Champions Champions League football, which you hope you don't miss out on, um, they're going. I think Spurs is going to be very scary next year just because of Conte, because he's what he can do with teams when he has backing, when he has investment, mm-hmm. and when he has a full. I've been saying this for months now, but when he has a full summer under his belt with the, with the squad. Yeah. So. It, it goes to show he's a man of simple values, but who stands very strongly behind what he thinks and not to belittle like his managerial style by any, by any means, but like he is willing to do just about anything to keep it very tr- like black and white for his players. I was watching his sit down with Thierry Henry. It was just like a quick oh, clip, so good, but like he was like, I'm willing to like let a player crumble and pull them out of the side if their energy levels aren't like if they're if they're not bringing it in training he will just take the player out they won't play him and like it's as simple as that there's no right. getting into it with the player the player needs to bring it and if they're not pull them out and 
Conte is willing to do that and call those shots if they're not willing to get behind him in the team. It's such know? a mind fuck for players too, because like, if it's he's, only going to make you work harder. It's you know crazy because I mean? like, like it's it's crazy because. I mean, we all, I mean, we played and I mean, you played a, a different sport, but you know, when a coach, a coach will take you out and tell you something in his case, he's just taking you out and not saying a goddamn thing in training. And he's running in, up and down the touchline <laughs> and screaming. Yeah. And you're like, what does this guy want? So it's like, it, it, like you said, it, it elicits like high energy, just a motivational, a motivational aspect that doesn't require words spoken to you. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And, that, and it's like, I feel like I bring up Mourinho, like he's an ex-girlfriend. I'm like, Oh, and she, he was just the worst. Oh, I can't believe I ever put up with that. But it's like <laughs> Mourinho's seated for a majority of the game. His facial expression looks very negative. He really only talks to the coaches a lot of the time. Like Conte could not be more polar opposite of that. He's never seated. He's always standing. I was like, it was, uh, it was the Burnley match. And the stoppage time was going really late and the refs weren't calling it. And this man is like in the middle of the field screaming at the refs, like, stop the game, like screaming at him. But he, I mean, the energy is there. He celebrates as hard or harder than anybody on the field when they score. And there's just like a very clear change within the team now. This is a lot of what I was saying when Mourinho was coach. We had kind of a, oh, we got a real guy now. We're starting to look like a real team. So a lot of work to be done. And I also think a lot of our summer business is getting players we already have. Like, it's locking down Romero, who's still not permanent. A lot of people don't know it's a two-year loan. So It is? We need to That's buy so Romero. Wild. still. That's so crazy. So, if anyone does a two-year loan at Spurs, come on. Uh, <laughs> just buy him. Yeah, uh, Kulisevsky. That's so Daniel Levy. Or Kulu's in, but... Uh, I think Bentecourt. Bentecourt needs to get... Yeah, yeah. So, or no, it's, it's flopped. I'll look at it. It's up. flopped. It's um, flopped. Kulu it needs is? to get signed. Bentecourt's Kulu, permanent. Kulu needs to get signed. Bentecourt's permanent. Which, like, I want them both permanent, so it really doesn't matter to me. I, but, like, I saw that they're probably good. It's like a... It looks like, good. Like a 95% chance that it's going to happen. Not, I was nervous Juventus was going to be like, oh, no, no, no. We, no, no come on. Apollo's leaving. He, right. So then they would need... And, and then these guys have had great showing, so I'm thinking Juventus is going to come calling. But it's looking like they'll do the business. I like that because they've gotten us to where we are. But like when I think of maybe a couple additions we still need, maybe a, a creative midfielder, another center back, like that'll be difficult because the market's just not great and there's a lot of other clubs going for those guys. So we'll I think see. I think Who's Conte... on an 18-month loan? Cool. Yeah, it was like, it was, it was a strange, <laughs> almost as strange as Romero's, which was like a That full means you two. have him all next season. But I, but I, but uh, what's his ass? Fab was on Twitter being like, I think they're gonna like make because I think they're just yeah, trying they to like buy, it, like buy, they should, like buy like, like, Don't like don't make this borrow furs and these long loan deals. Oh, it's just like it's, a it's, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Style. It's weird that the other club like Juventus like was just like yeah sure right like yeah, what? it was easier for them or they like still then the Juventus liked having the option then still well that's but. that's the whole idea behind a loan is you, you mean you don't know what the player's worth is until right you send them out that's 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 he really of, needs to see his worth that's the type no, of shit for, that uh, for didn't get no, Diaz <laughs> exactly like Jalen exactly like or Triore or any number of people that we had 60 meetings with and it just never got done so it's it's kind of a bummer that now, like in terms of what needs to get added, like we do still got to go out and, and get a couple guys who will be chased by other clubs. But I mean, I'm I'm in I'm in a good spot right now. I'm happy with how everything's shaking out, and it's it's a nice feeling. I'll be so, a so kind of feels all the time. It's so weird. I'm thinking, wow, like happy with the way my club's playing. Like, are people always like this? He doesn't this remember. Like, he doesn't rem- remember his. Roots. He doesn't know. He doesn't remember what it used to be like. You think the he, Sterling. He lives think, in uh, only. He lives in the golden age of yeah. Liverpool right now. You think you Kane still uh, live in the golden age? Some hat tricks? No, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> you think Kane tosses him about the four assists? Yeah, absolutely. He's just pinging balls. He's like, 100%, score. Hundred <laughs> percent. I, I don't know. It's been a good. Uh, it seems like it's very good vibes in the team. And I mentioned when we were in our group chat, like how Sonny has been like strangely single a lot of this time. This is completely sad. He's dated two like pretty high level Korean uh, pop singers. So really, my bad, goes Sonny. For the pop stars, you're doing you. It's gorgeous because he's, he's, he's handsome. He's a man, dude. He's so cool. Um, yeah, surging Spurs. I guess they are surging. I get penalties. Like it's a good yes. call. They're they're soaring, dude. They're, <laughs> they're way soaring. up there. Both soaring and surging. <laughs>